Good evening and welcome to Express News with me, Deepika, your daily half an hour window that brings you 100 news and updates from the country and the world in just 30 minutes. Let's begin. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in India's largest geographical state, Rajasthan, where he held a rally in the city of Churu. Addressing the voters, Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserted that the promises made by the ruling party have always been fulfilled, unlike other parties. India's opposition party, Congress, released its manifesto for the upcoming general elections today in New Delhi. The document release event was attended by Congress President Malikarjun Kharge, along with leaders Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi, P. Chidambaram, among others. DMK Alliance Party conducted a door-to-door -door campaign for Indian Union Muslim League candidate for Ramanathapuram constituency in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. Tripura Chief Minister Manik Saha held a Padhyatra or a journey undertaken on foot in support of party's candidate in Rajnagar, South Tripura. With an attempt to increase voter turnout in the country, the Election Commission of India held a press conference on Friday in the national capital, New Delhi. The Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar addressed the municipal commissioners from major cities and districts and directed them to prepare a both-wise action plan for enhanced participation and behavioural change in which people are self-motivated to vote. India's Central Bank on Friday announced its decision on the short-term lending rate or repo rate and kept it unchanged at 6.5%. Announcing the current fiscal year monetary policy, RBI Governor Shakti Das said that headline inflation has eased to 5.1% during January and February 2024 from the earlier peak of 5.7% in December 2023. RBI Governor noted that inflation has come down significantly, adding that robust growth prospects provide the policy space to remain focused on inflation and ensure its descent to the target of 4%. Reserve Bank of India has retained the real GDP growth forecast for 2024-25 financial year at 7%. RBI Governor Shakti Das said the domestic economy activity is continuing to expand at an accelerated pace, improving employment conditions and sustained growth in manufacturing and services sector to boost private investment. RBI Governor noted that the inflation is moderating and GDP growth is robust, asserting that RBI will focus on preserving financial stability. Indian Army successfully thwarted an infiltration attempt along the line of control in the URI in the URI sector located in North Kashmir. According to official sources, the operation took place at the Rustam post on Friday morning. One terrorist was also eliminated during the operation. Trade between India and Bangladesh through Mehdipur Sona Masjid will remain suspended for a week from the 8th of April on the occasion of Eid ul Fitr and Pehla Beshak. Massive fire breaks out in power distribution company in Raipur's Kota area. Barrels containing flammable material being removed from the site. Rescue operation is currently underway. Traditional community fishing was performed by the Sungiki Filimi community of Lota and Sumi tribe of Nagaland. This long-standing traditional uh, activity holds deep cultural significance, symbolizing the brotherhood between the two communities. Snow clearance work is currently on, on the road leading to Amarnath Cave, which is in full swing. It is for the first time in the history of Amarnath Yatra that the overall control of the maintenance of the Amarnath Yatra track is under the Border Road Organization. Indian markets ended flat on Friday. Sensex rose 20.59 points to settle at 74,242.48.22. Nifty dipped 0.95 points to 22,513.7. Indian rupee rose 9 paise to settle at 83.3 against the US dollar. 
Gold futures maturing on the 5th of June stood at 69,760 rupees per 10 grams on Multi Commodity Exchange of India Limited. Silver futures maturing on the 3rd of May stood at 79,410 rupees per kilogram on the MCX. Oil prices extended gains on Friday as concerns about tightening supply and expectations about demand growth as economies improve. Brent crude was up to 91.01 dollar a barrel. U.S. stocks ended sharply lower on Thursday as Federal Reserve officials took a cautious approach in comments on the outlook for interest rate cuts while investors braced for Friday's key U.S. monthly job reports. S&P 500 lost 64.28 points to end at 5,147.21 points, while the Nasdaq Composite lost 228.38 points and the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 530.16 points. European stocks fell to a more than two-week low on Friday. Stock 600 fell 1.2% on track for its worst day since mid-October 2023. An Italian court on Friday accused Italian fashion group Armani of indirectly subcontracting its production to Chinese companies that exploited workers. The court in Milan ordered a one-year receivership for Giorgio Armani operations. Weather forecasters at Colorado State University have predicted an extremely active Atlantic hurricane since season in 2024. The extreme hurricane season in 2024 will be due to warm sea surface temperatures and less wind shear to break up storms in the summer and the fall. A drone footage by the local fire department showcased the extent of flooding and damage on Wheeling Island in West Virginia. The fire department has warned residents of Wheeling Island, Center Wheeling and South Wheeling to expect moderate flooding on Thursday as the Ohio River is forecast to crest at 41.9 feet. Satellite imagery showed a storm system swirling over the United States Midwest and Northeast. Taiwan's Hulien County Fire Department released images and videos of rescuers searching people trapped at a mountain tunnel following the earthquake. Survivors who were trapped in Jiwuku Cave in Taiwan following the earthquake were rescued and brought at an evacuation center. The demolition of a tilted building in Huolien began on Friday, two days after the Taiwan earthquake. Excavators broke the windows of the building as dismantling operations commenced. Rescuers were seen airlifting survivors trapped in a mountainous area of Taiwan on Friday, two days after the earthquake. A memorial service was held for the victims of the earthquake in Taiwan's Hulian County that killed at least 12 people. Taiwanese authorities said that there were four foreigners among the 18 people who are still missing in the earthquake rubble. A video released by Taiwan's National Fire Agency showed a group of workers from a hotel in Hulian County stranded near a tunnel after the earthquake. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel will hurt Iran to defend itself against Tehran, which he said has been working against Israel directly and through its proxies. Israeli army said that an investigator's report into the killing of eight workers in an airstrike in Gaza on Monday is ready and will be presented to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington's policy on Gaza depended on immediate action by Israel to improve the humanitarian situation and the safety of civilians. Israel said it approved the reopening of the Ires crossing into the northern Gaza and the temporary use of Ashtoth port in southern Israel following U.S. demands to increase humanitarian aid supplies into Gaza. Turkish authorities arrested two people believed to be working for Israeli intelligence and also released a video of the suspects under arrest. 
Russian Air Defense Forces shot down a Ukrainian Su-27 fighter jet, 196 drones and intercepted 18 U.S.-made HIMAR missiles. The Ukrainian armed forces repelled 48 attacks from the Russian army, striking multiple targets including Russian personnel and two Russian artilleries. Denis Pushilin, the Russia-backed head of Ukraine's next region, said two people were killed there by Ukrainian shelling and nine others were wounded. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg said alliance members have agreed to scour their arsenals for more air defense systems to support Ukraine from Russian ballistic missiles attacks. The U.S. and European Union said they will continue to support Armenia and ethnic Armenians from the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. United States Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen held roundtable talks with U.S. and foreign business leaders in China's southern city of Gangzhou as she kicked off her four-day visit to China. Janet Yellen said she was looking forward to having open and direct communication on issues that both the United States and China disagree as she met Southern Guangdong Province Governor Wang Weishong. Yellen said that concerns are growing over the global economic fallout from China's excess manufacturing capacity. Abdul Malik Al Houthi, leader of Yemen's Houthi, said that 37 people killed and 30 were injured in US and British air strikes in Yemen. US President Joe Biden celebrated the 203rd anniversary of Greek Independence Day with a reception at the White House on Thursday. The White House said US President Joe Biden plans to meet with families of workers lost in the collapse of a Baltimore bridge. An aerial footage showed the state of the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore 10 days after a cargo ship collided with it. Once again under heavy protection, British billionaire Joe Lewis was seen leaving the court after a U.S. judge ordered him to pay a $5 million U.S. million fine and serve three years of probation for sharing illegal stock tips. A portion of a crane fell onto a bridge over the New River in downtown Florida in the USA, crushing a car and killing one person. However, the driver escaped unhurt. An airplane landed on a highway in Chatham County, North Carolina. No injuries have been reported even after the plane hit two vehicles during the emergency landing. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol casted his ballot in early voting for the parliamentary elections next week. At least 14 people died and two were left injured in an accident involving a small bus and a truck on a highway in Uvuro in the western Bolivia. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban began his two-day visit to Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Spanish Coast Guard Service rescued 73 migrants from a wooden boat in the seas of the Canary Islands. 13 fixed-wing drones were shot down over the capital of Myanmar on Thursday in a foiled attack by terrorists seeking to destroy important locations of the city. Demonstrators packed the streets of Tehran on Friday ahead of a funeral for Iranian officers killed in a suspected Israeli embassy strike in Damascus. Iran's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei held prayers in Tehran for seven officers who were killed in an airstrike on the Iranian embassy in Damascus on the 1st of April. The UN World Food Programme delivered the food aid supplies into Darfur, Sudan, the first WFP assistance to reach the war-wrecked region in months. An animal lover in Turkey's capital Ankara built a train out of plastic barrels with an attached ATV to give rides to the disabled dogs. One of Japan's celebrated traditional gardens in Ishikawa Prefecture has now opened for beautiful cherry blossom viewing. Holidaymakers are leaving Bangladeshi capital Dhaka as Holy Eid Ul Fitru is knocking on the door. 
Muhammad Ali's white satin boxing flunks from his ep epic thriller in Manila, A Bout with Rival Joe Frazier, are on the auction block with an estimated sale value of 4 million to 6 million US dollars. A dazzling custom bound signed first edition of Truman Capito's renowned breakfast at Tiffany's with over 1,000 white diamonds in a platinum setting, totaling nearly 30 carats, will be debuted at the ABAA New York International Antiquarian Book Fair. A book bound in human skin dating back to 1682, described as a unicorn in the rare book market, was also featured at the ABAA Book Fair. Leticia Ferrer, a 63-year-old woman living in North Texas, is said to have chased more than 20 total solar eclipses across the world and will also be present for the next one which is occurring in the USA. Rare book dealer Peter Harrington brought the original galley, gallery proofs of Winston Churchill's A History of the English-Speaking Peoples to the ABAA Book Fair that is said to be one of only two copies available across the world. Narrative scene paintings from Chinese history came to life in Shanghai as part of a campaign by U.S. Nat giant Mondelez International. Spring burst into London as an interactive cherry blossom display took over an exhibition space in the city centre. Angelina Jolie's legal team has filed new court documents accusing Brad Pitt of a disturbing pattern of abuse. These allegations came to light shortly after the actor's latest move following a court ruling over the French wine yard he co-owned with Jolie. It has been reported that Chai Young, a member of the K-pop girl group, twice is currently in a relationship with R&B artist Yeon T. Kane West is facing hard times after a lawsuit was filed by his ex-employee, alleging that West made inappropriate sexual remarks and exhibited lewd behaviour around easy colleagues. Billie Eilish added her entire Instagram followers to the close friends list. On Thursday, she added her 111 million followers on the platform by adding them to the list, giving them a closer look of personal Instagram stories. The picture uploaded by Billy on Insta Story appeared to be a cryptic announcement for a new album. BTS is expected to reunite for a potential mega world tour as indicated by a recent report. Musical Mamma Mia, based on songs by Swedish pop group, celebrated its landmark one of 25 successful years in London's West End. Production house Maitri Movie Makers released a new poster for Pushpa the Rule. The poster shows Rashmika Mandana as Srivali, all decked up in silk and gold. German American composer Hans Zimmer will make his debut in the Indian film industry with Ramayan. As per reports, Hans Zimmer and Indian music maestro A.R. Rahman will be collaborating to compose music for the movie. Preeti Zinta posed with Shubman Gill and Shikhar Dhawan after her team Punjab Kings won. The actor also posed with the deadly duo Shashank Singh and Ashutosh Sharma. In IPL, Punjab Kings stunned Gujarat Titans by taking a three-wicket victory in Ahmedabad on Thursday. Shashank Singh and Impact Substitute Ashutosh Sharma pulled off a stunning run chase for Punjab Kings as they chased down 200 runs giving Punjab second victory of the season. Women's tennis body said on Thursday the season-ending WTA finals will be held in Saudi Arabia's capital Riyadh from 2024 till 26. Bilki Smir from India's Jammu and Kashmir has become the first woman to represent the country as a jury member at this year's Summer Olympics. World number one doubles pair of Sattvik Sairaj, Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty pulled out of their men's doubles title defence at next week's Badminton Asia Championships. Young Indian women's shuttler Anmol Kharp lost in the women's singles quarterfinal to Japan's Sureno Yoshikawa in Kazakhstan International Challenge on Friday. 
Rafael Nadal withdrew from the upcoming Monte Carlo Masters on Thursday, saying his body is not yet ready for competition. Liverpool reclaimed the Premier League lead in an enthralling title race as Alexis Alistair's Thunderbolt and a late header by Cody Gakpo secured a nervy 3-1 home victory over bottom club Sheffield United. Chelsea, Chelsea staged a last gas comeback to beat Manchester United by 4-3 with Cole Palmer, bagging a hat-trick to turn a madcap Premier League match on its head. And more than 350 collectibles from the world of sport, from sneakers to jerseys, are up for auction at Sotheby's in New York. One of the leading items is Kobe Bryant's Los Angeles Lakers jersey from game number one of the 2009 NBA finale that Sotheby estimates will sell for 1.5 to 2.5 million US dollars. And with this, it's a wrap here on Express News for now. But news and updates will continue here on DD India. So don't go anywhere. Keep watching and keep tracking DD India for all latest news and updates from the country and the world. Thank you so much for joining us right now. Namaskar.